Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode. Today I'm here with the founder of Block Ape Scissors. He's going to be talking me through how to play the game, which is currently available in alpha. And we're going to be looking at just asking a couple of questions, finding out a bit about the project and future ambitions and things like that. So you've got a good understanding of if you invest in this, what you what you can expect. So would you like to introduce yourself, Matthew? Yeah, sure. So my name is Matthew Hutton. Uh, I'm the founder of Block Ape Scissors. And... Um... Such a project that's, that's been around for approximately two and a half months. Um, and we have a, a gaming DeFi NFT ecosystem. So the NFTs uh, apply both in game and also to the funds based on a, a play to win model. Uh, and we've, we've just kicked off the alpha. Um, so it's, it's a little rusty and a little raw, but um, you know we have a game over product, we're building and generating. Um, and it's really exciting for us to, to start introducing people to, to the base functions of the game and, and where we'll be building from. Yeah, it's nice to see a, uh, a cryptocurrency project that is stating this is an alpha. You know, yeah. there's been so many projects that are just like, this is what it's going to be. And then they release it and it's just an absolute mess and then and then they go then they switch to this is beta by the way we didn't tell you that beforehand but this is beta so nice to see you being open about where the project is at the moment yeah look i mean the thing is with, with an alpha it's pretty rare actually that you get a chance or opportunity to have a look at an alpha um and you know it's pretty rare that you get a chance to have a look at an alpha uh yeah. stage game and um let alone have an opportunity to contribute mm. but uh we we're building a project that's very focused around community uh, around feedback and um and helping us really design something that's amazing for our community so um we have our, our game mechanics and everything set in terms of the trajectory of, of what we want to be rolled out for our first three modes um but the intricacies and the nuances and the subtleties involved in that game you know how long it falls here and where it should pause and what prompted it all those little things um we will very likely set aside priority items to, to implement based on a consensus model for what everyone agrees we should be using. Um, and then that kind of thing I think is really valuable, having that community grow and get the feedback for a really great product that everyone wants to use. Is, yeah. Is really the key factor. So. I think it's something that you, you, you don't tend to see, because I come from mobile gaming and there's not a great connection between the game developers and the community. They tend to change things when there's like an uproar, when something doesn't work and people don't like it. So it's nice to see, and I think it does kind of, it's, it's, it's across the crypto gaming community is there's a lot more community involvement. And I think it's just, you know, having that investment, you've, you know, you value it a bit more, I think, than, than game developers do. So we're going to be playing through the game. Where, wh what point did... Did this idea spark so you know for me cryptocurrency i got into it in february and didn't know much about it bitcoin was the first thing i look at and as i delved into it it just expanded into like other tokens and then other utility of those tokens where where where's where did you come from and and what kind of got you into this this is such a great question i really like how you shaped it um so i've been in tech for like pretty much 20 years um you know, infrastructure projects, uh, project lead, and, and also project director on the different types of things uh, for infrastructure and tech. And um, in 2017, I came across crypto based on one of my friends who was who was trading Ethereum um, on Toro, and then he said, you know, he was quite successful, and he said that um, you know he's done a lot of good investments, but by far the best one he did was Ethereum, he bought it at like eighteen dollars. <laughs> In there, done that. <laughs> you know, your spurs the hard way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just became a complete passion of mine for the last three years. Uh, in 2020, I became certified solution architect for blockchain, and um, I've done IBM courses and all that sort of stuff. I'm just fascinated by consensus mechanisms and the way that you can just like absolutely like rip the heart out and just say, look, this is no longer needed. We can put you on life support. That kind of thing is really cool. 
Yeah. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, I'm driving along the street and I see all these terrestrial retail shop fronts for banks and things, and I'm just laughing because I'm like, you guys are going to be completely replaced. Yeah. Crypto doesn't need a shop front. We don't have those overheads. You guys are, you know, the thing of the past. It's, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Yeah, I went so into town the other day, and um, it was, it was, it was just, sorry. it was. I went into town the other day to to, to get a haircut to, to get it to this point <laughs> before it was a lot worse, um, but. It was amazing to see how many, like the devastation of lockdown on on shops. Like there was so many things that were just closed and shut down. And I think that is even without lockdown, you're right. Like something that we're going to start to see is people. There's so much more accessibility, isn't it? Efficiency with with buying things on on in, in, on the internet. Hundred percent. And if you think about, so most of the businesses today. Um, they're all based on a, on a debt-based model. So how much can I borrow and how, how much can I invest into a retail shop front or a retail space, mm. um, you know, and and they're, they're all about real estate and marginalization. And the problem with that is that it's, it's based largely on foot traffic. Um, but in, in a lockdown scenario, you don't have nearly as much foot traffic. Um, you don't have hubs of people going there anymore because it's grand. No. So the, the, the situation that we have now is diversification and we have people working remotely and we have all these different things that are cropping up. I mean, who knew that an influencer economy was going to be a thing? That just blows me away. Yeah. So we now have, you know, a completely different idea about how we can run businesses, how we can um, get people entertained, get them paid. Um, and the whole thing is just completely different. And there are so many new opportunities. And the reality is we don't need all of this friction that, that it's provided with regular currency and, and also with things like retail shop fronts, mm. all the overheads associated with them, having, you know, customer support personnel that are, that are constantly there. Um, I mean, all of this can be replaced with smart contracts, AI, um, and a really good community management team. So yeah. um, if you look at those sorts of things, they're, they're literally, you know, and the unfortunate case is very, very low skill jobs can be replaced. Um, but what it actually gives way to is is the uh, you know the consumer economy, which is based on um, you know gravitating your interest and your time and what you're giving your attention to, and then you know um, how you how you want to be participating in whatever that model is or economy. So it'll be the diversification of economic sort of. Um, scales and models that will, will really take shape in the next two or five years. Yeah. I didn't realise we've become so philosophical in this stream. <laughs> really cool, good, good really cool stuff to talk about. Um, yeah, no, I'm, it, it's so fascinating. I, I find like um, anybody who's like minded within the crypto universe, like because you, you just you just there's so much to talk about, and then like. I mean, my, my wife doesn't want to hear about it. Like, she's just she's sick to death of hearing crypto. And so, yeah, it's nice to speak to somebody who is just deep into it and minded. You mentioned in that um, your partnership with IBM, how, how important was it you to, to, to get those strategic partnerships with other people? Oh, hugely important. So, I mean, uh, when, when we, so I'll, I'll just tap back to the, the original point, which I could sort of take a massive tangent. Um, the idea formed in, in 2018 um, for the game. Yeah. But it was really uh, in February this year where it all started to come together and I was building it out based on my experience with, with farming and um, and being rug pulled myself and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I was just like, you know, we, we, need to, we need to do something. We need to give people some hope that they can do something with their coins, maybe even resurrect the project. Mm. The contract has been renounced. Um, you know, let's, let's give an opportunity for, for people and for their projects that um, that haven't gone so well because all of these projects that really have no utility, um, they, they hit a wall if, if, there's, if there's no additional height uh, if they run out of marketing money. Mm. And that's a real problem. So the, the idea was based uh, around, you know, creating a solution to a really problem um, and then it, it built out from there. So that's, that's kind of how we got there. And what, what we really sort of, Moving on to your, your last question, what we discovered was, you know, inherently one of the most important things that we need to do is is in, inspire trust and provide enormous transparency in what we're doing. Um, so, like, all of our multi-seed wallets um, are up on the doc section. You can see, you know, what's going on um, in the various different wallets. So, marketing, uh, prize pools. Um, all the farms and the Dow Treasury, like, you know, they can see those wallets and see what's happened. Um, yeah. It's all public. So um, on that level, it's there. And we, we also had some some people saying, well, 
hang on. Audience haven't, uh, they haven't, you know, tweeted or anything like that. Well, audience have got cold feet. Um, yeah, a bit. Gonna, Let's know, get into it for a minute. And we're, you know, 400 mil cap. Um, to be honest, they're not going to care. We no. need to prove ourselves first. Yeah, for sure. They will go, look what we did. We did this thing, and now you need to know about it. Um, yeah. That's kind of how they're going to they're gonna go. Um, so it's, it's kind of, um, you know, until you, you prove yourself, you're not going to get that side. But in saying that, um, you know, the, the integrations and partnerships that we have secured so far, I think it's been excellent, but it's been really amazing. And the reason is that we need to get partnerships and people on board into what we're doing, what we're building, um, is, to, is to get a, a, you know, a foothold in the market and also establish legitimacy. So, you know, I'm docs, I'm fully docs, everyone knows who I am. Um, my face is everywhere. Uh, on what, does, what does doxed mean, just for people who don't doxed, know what that means? Doxed means um, that someone has documents on you and they can figure out based on this information that, uh, you know, this is in fact who you are. Yeah. Therefore, you are, um, you know, kind of able to be tracked or traced if necessary. Uh, yeah. So, you know, my... My LinkedIn profile is up on the site, and you know it's it's got a little mile long. Yeah, like you guys are doing everything right in terms of building that, helping to build that trust. Because just as a, I, I I get so many emails a day that are just you've got to if every single one you've got to do like your due diligence because I'm going to stream this stuff and, and partner with some people. Is every time it's like I've got to run through a checklist. And it's, oh, sure. when did your Twitter form and social media start? As I say, you started the idea, became in February. If there's a good amount of time, that's usually a good sign. Are there, you know, as you say, are the, are the team fully doxxed? Is there that open documentation that can help you figure it out? And then, you know, the next thing is like this, you know, AMAs, I want to see a face that helps me build a trust that there is a team behind it and there's not just some, I don't know, 13 year old kid just <laughs> completely. Like, yeah, look, it's 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 super important because even like I mean the, the to be honest, the scammers in this space are so sophisticated. Like uh, a great example of this is we were we were trying to set up an OTC deal um, to sell some of our marketing bass in order to uh, translate that to, to the USD stable coins. Yeah. But we didn't have to sell to the market and create sell pressure on our token and then we could pay you know um you know marketing related activities with the stable coin and not have a risk of those people selling our token and reducing the price so we, we set up this otc deal um and it all was looking really good uh, basically we went through a bit of due diligence and the, the, the process was going to be i was going to send funds to dan they were going to verify that the funds existed on chain and then they were going to send my wallet to USDT. So we went through this process um, where, where we sent the funds in, in between our team. And it was, it was an odd idea, but anyway, you know, we went with it anyway. Yeah. And then um, we thought, well, what, what's the risk? So we did that. And then what happened was I was waiting for this USDT to come in um, in order to, to get Dan to, to release the, um, the bass to these people. Mm. And, uh, and what I actually did is they duplicated our Telegram chat that we had with the group, copied my username, uh, sorry, not my username, my, my profile, mm, my uh, duplicated the entire chat that, that had gone on, wow. and then used the, the fraudulent profile of, of me uh, to respond and say, yeah, I've got the money, um, it's, it's here, release the funds, and luckily, we had protocols in place, in place where if there's any large volumes happening, mm. um, A, there's a discussion, B, there's a phone call before it even happens. That's good. So he called me and he's like, is this it? And I'm like, no, it's not there. He goes, well, hang on. You just told me that it was. And I'm like, that's not me. Oh my God. Like, so so sophisticated. These... The, the scams I've seen, like just another level. They're so clever about them. Like I've seen whole websites completely created exactly the same as another one, and then you've just got this like a, 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 a three hours before they go access the pre-sale. Uh -huh. People just get right into it because it just looks so legit. And it's, it's, it's crazy. It's... And, and look at you know not to show my marketing side, but it's like 
as soon as you get listed anywhere or um, if it's a new project, uh, like literally hundreds of people will come into your chat, target you and say, I have an AMA product proposal, I have a marketing proposal, I have this proposal, I have that proposal. Yeah. And, and I can tell you like 99.9% of them will not be legitimate. Yeah. You know, it is. It is crazy out there. So, um, rolling back to There's so much money in it, isn't there? Our brokers is, um, uh, IBM know this, they're not stupid. Yeah. Uh, they, they know that, um, the space is full of degenerates, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> and, you know, in some cases that's a great thing, uh, because we get things done really fast, but in yeah. other cases, um, because it's so wild west, uh, it, it makes it dangerous for a big company to play in. Yeah. So our model with IBM is we are effectively like their first line of defense. Um, so we pre-qualify and go through and do pre-sales, technical pre-sales, look at projects, vet them out, make sure their code is reasonable. Um, what's their business model? Do they have any business acumen? What's their roadmap? Do they have any mentors? Do they need mentors? All these things. Mm. Um, and when they get qualified, you know, we can pass them over to IBM. So they can work with their FIPS 140-2 level four hardware security modules and all their um, really awesome backend stuff and build out their own, you know, either unique gaming platform at the back um, and build up private chain agnostic stuff. Or if they want to, they can use a white label solution that we're building or we can help them build it out. Yeah. There's a variety of different sort of models and options, but the main thing is big player like IBM really wants to get into the space, but it's kind of like, you see the water in the swimming pool, but they don't know if that water is hot yeah. or if it's cold. So they want to dive in, but they need someone else to go, yeah, no, the water's fine. Come in, guys. It's all good. Yeah. You know? And that's us. So yeah. um, we've, we've got a bunch of guys uh, that are prepping out all of our, um, all our business uh, development stuff and all forms and all workflows and process, processes and stuff uh, to get everything tied in. And that comes to the front of house stuff we're building which is a work with us platform. Uh, I won't delve too much into that because I could be talking for hours. But um, yeah, we'll look out for it on the side. It'll be really cool. Yeah, brilliant. All right, well, let's dive into the game and let's take a look at it. So, block, ape, scissors, a play on rock, paper, scissors. Where'd the idea come and, you know, what was the thinking behind that? Well, I've got about 50 ideas in crypto, but this is the first one that I thought that I would do. And yeah, it's 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 a play on, on rock, paper, scissors because I figured the mechanics themselves are really quite simple. Yeah. But how do we make them exciting and how do we expand them out to a game that, that people really enjoy playing? And the answer is we apply the rock, paper, scissors mechanics to a poker-like table model uh, with a point system. And we also have uh, the point system that's based on three potential types of outcomes. So yeah. the first one is majority wins. So let's say three three different types of movements are played, rock, paper, and scissors. Um, the most movement that is played wins uh, the most points, yeah. and that's called majority wins. The second one is called underdog adversary, and that's where only two types of movements are played, and the one that is that counters the other one is in fact a smaller number of players than the other one. Yeah. And the reason why that is important is because it's an anti-collusion tactic to make sure that if people are being ganged up on on a table mm. or anything like that, you can't manipulate the game in your favor as a group. Yeah. Because if you try to, um, and let's say there are, there are six, well, let's say there are five people on a table, um, four of them play scissors, and the one who's being ganged up on happens to play rock. Well, that, that rock beats the scissors. The scissors can't beat the rock. Yeah. There is no counter to the rock, which means it's an underdog adversary, and the points are double. So right. what that would mean is 1v4 times 2 is 8. So that person will get 8 points yeah. in that scenario, which really balances it out. Um, and the last one is called um, Jungle Party. So that's where an equal number of movements is played across the entire table. And that is, um, in, in a 6-8 game, um, that is three points each. Yeah, uh, so, so two rocks, two paper, two scissors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's only ever three potential outcomes uh, yeah. that, that can happen. Um, and you apply that with the point system. And uh, in battle mode, it's just literally you're going head-to-head -head 
there are five rounds, so you have three phases on five rounds. The first phase has um, is called the jungle phase, and that's essentially like a block. So yep. you have three different movements. Um, you play them in quick succession, and then the next phase is the forest phase. Uh, which is another another movement, almost like another card coming out. And then the last one is the river, so everyone knows the river is. Yeah. Um, and that's your that's essentially your game cycle, um, which includes the five rounds. And as it stands at the moment with Alpha, we have five, uh, sorry, best of five in the game cycles. I really need one of those influencer drinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's, um, it's best of five, um, and... That's just how it's coded at the moment, but we'll have best of three, five, seven, nine, and eleven um, yeah. in, in the battle mode. Um, and then the, the points are tallied at the end, and you compare three and fight over one. Brilliant. Well, I'll, I'll I'll give you my best go, but I'll I'll let you know. I'm readied up now. Um, I. So this is, I, I was quite drawn to this because like, I mean, it's, it's such a universal game, isn't it? That, that everybody plays. In, in my household, rock, paper, scissors is the way you decide those those 50 50 decisions me and my wife are like we both want a cup of tea but neither is going to really be bothered to go and get it there's only one way to decide we both need tea so it's rock paper scissors and i swear to god like i i have i'm, I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist so i got a psychology degree it doesn't help me at all like i i, I lose probably 90 percent of the time i swear oh, she's I, she's inside my head my, my, my daughter beats me um, you know, and she's eight, so sometimes, you know, all the psychology training in the world isn't going to help. Makes um, no difference. Sometimes it's luck, uh, but to be, to be clear, there are elements of um, when we bring in the power moves, which are being built at the moment, there's mm. a lot of skill edge um, yeah. that you can apply. And there is a lot of, you know, there's a reason why my wife beats me, because she knows my pattern in my head, you know, she can predict what I'm going for, you know, that if I... If I go rock and she gets rock, and then those those tense moments where you both like rock, 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 and like who's gonna switch first? And like I'm like, right now's the time I'm gonna switch. That's the time she gets me. Oh really? Wow, <laughs> that's she knows you well. Wow, you can only get away from that. It's really, it's really interesting that um, you know so a lot of people don't know the history. Uh, mm. Rock was originally. Uh, designed in China in the 1400s, uh, and it got it got quite popular um, yeah. in you know, in certain regions. And then actually, it got massively culturally embedded in Japan in the 1700s, I think. I think it's the 1700s. Mm. And since then, uh, it has become a cultural staple, uh, and they call it Jenkin. Please correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. But this is from what I, what I understand. And it is literally a decision making pro protocol. Yeah. Right and it's literally now on our roadmap that it's becoming a decision making protocol when we get the Asian market. Um, right. Because it is, if you imagine people, people will be somewhere else and they'll be like, okay, um, who's going to pay for dinner later on? Uh, well, I don't know. Let's, let's block our business for it. Yeah. And they don't have to be in the same location, they can just do it. And it's all provable on chain. And, you know, that person pays. And we can, you know, over time with uh, with integrations and all those things, you can even link in so that person is set up in an S road pack. Yeah. Directly to a, whatever it might be um, in the future. So, yeah, there's something about that. Like, you're willing to, like, if you know there's. When you're having those decisions where you're not sure who, who's 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 going to do this, something like that, and they, it does help you to go because if you lose, you've lost fairly, and so there's no like, oh, I've lost out because I'm paying for the meal. It's because you had a chance to win it, you just didn't, you just didn't get lucky enough. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm about to hit ready. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. So what will happen is, uh, once you, I don't know if anyone can see your screen. Yeah, they can see my screen, see my uh, my gameplay. Perfect. So when we hit ready, it will have a countdown, and then we'll kick into the first phase, which is the jungle phase. And um, then we'll need to basically click the movements three times. Yep. Uh, in order for that to register, and that'll tally up our points down the bottom left which is uh, where you can see all the rounds down the bottom of my pointing screen. Yeah. Yeah, down the bottom left. Uh, and then we'll move through the phases, uh, and then we'll, we'll get some um, 
Okay. Don't choose that one. Don't choose it. Block, 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 block. <laughs> this is the, like, the, the, the psychology tactics, they don't work. Like, I'm trying to make you think. You play, you play rock, so, uh, we'll find out what happens. Was he true to his word or was he setting me up with paper? Oh! Ooh. He did. He did. <laughs> Rock, 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 rock. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm about to get schooled here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the title for this beat. Oh, we lost. Uh, yeah. Switched it up. The yeah. beat founder at his own game. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. Those are the mind games. Draw! Ooh. Right, so we've both gone. So I think uh, we won the first phase. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we won the first game, game cycle. Nice. It was at the end. Now we need to switch it up. Right, I'm going. So I need you to go. Yeah! But first time I've gone rock. So how did I get two points then? What was that? How did I get two points then and not one then? Uh, because there's three rounds. So every round has a point in the jungle phase of three, so... Right. After three points, they're going to be given away. Ah. Oh! We are, we are head-to-head next to next. See you on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you have 15 seconds and it's not like... <laughs> if that's where I lose, it's those... Am I, am am I countering your counter? Your counter or... that's... Draw! Oh, we <laughs> wow. So okay, both so one... one okay. Um... Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Wait, I'm, I'm doing this off camera. You can't see. It. Oh no, you can't see. I'm, 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 I'm doing my. No, I'm doing the hand movements. No, <laughs> I'm doing the hand movements to to left, so I know what I, what I'm doing. So am I switching it, or am I staying the same? <laughs> So I need you to okay. Magic. Draw. Ooh. So you've gone okay. You've gone rock. Mate. You've gone rock. Mate. I think I think I know. I think I'm, I'm tapping into some some energy in your family. <laughs> uh, Stop tapping into my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, sorry, what are you doing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah <cool>. <laughs> <laughs> it would. It wouldn't surprise me. Oh, I, I've been like a, a thousand rounds. I haven't beaten you. You're in my head. <laughs> we have a look. Okay. After three rounds. Right. I've got this one. Oh. <sighs> yes. Right. That's where I'm going to see you then. And okay. It's like, when do you switch? When do you stay? Okay. One more, one more point. And I was like, yes. Whoa. Oh. Wow. <laughs> We're neck and neck. So the avatars that we have. Are they? I've seen some in in the the menu. There's like customizable gear. What what were your plans around that? We got lots of plans. Um, I'm just gonna see this counter come down and uh -oh. draw another draw. Wow, this is literally the, the decider. This is the decider. This is the decider. That's crazy. Okay, I'm fine. I, I was just waiting until this moment to beat you. I just wanted. I wanted to. After the first one, I was like, like give, give him some hope. <laughs> Love it. So the closet 
there'll be a, a box yes. of <laughs> got two. This is we're we're in a nail biter here. Absolute nail biter. I think I'm good. You'll be able to buy a whole bunch of NFTs, so in-game accessories to, to kit out your ape with, including like player icons as well. Um, there'll be a lot that you can do. So the apes that you can see in the screen, I'm pointing to <gasps> is it, oh! Look at it again. Two all. Oh my goodness. This is literally the deciding round. We're 2-2 two, two and 2-2 two, two in the game. <laughs> See, I'm throwing questions at you to try and give you less time to think. Yes. No! You beat me in your own game. And so, like, how much did you pay? Well, you know, I suppose you didn't have to pay. How did you, um, like, did you think, like, I'll, I'll, I'll plan it so that, you know, I'll get the devs to make sure that they... I, I fix. Fix! <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm gonna play that. And that's, that's literally what I did at the end. I was um, just I was just like I'm not changing. I'm not changing from paper. That was that was amazing. That was a really great game. It's a tense I game. Really that. It was that was two all up until the very, very last moment we were two all. Yeah, round one two. Yeah, round five, two five, you five, took five, it. Oh yeah, no no it was two all two all. One and two. Jesus, that was about as tense as you can get it. That was super close. That's got to be the closest game that I've ever had. Um, like I say, really cool. psychology degree doesn't <laughs> doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with your psych degree? Um, I'm a cognitive. Well, I I, I co became did a post grad and became a cognitive behavioural therapist, working with like anxiety wow. disorders and depression. I've been doing that for the past, you know, 10, 12 years. And then I um, started the YouTube channel. Um, and it was just a little hobby on the side. And now going into the crypto realm, I've, 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 I've literally, this is my second day as a full time YouTuber. So I've wow. gone, I've gone on a career break because I mean, I, I invested in some good coins, crypto blade skill just went massively up and that was that just created an opportunity i thought i'm just going to do this for six months and yeah, and, and see how yeah. i get on and and yeah it's looking to be very very fruitful at the moment i think i might be able to maintain it as a full-time job yeah. um but i still have to pay the student loan off and it still doesn't do anything for me <laughs> so yeah you were saying so, um, the the avatars then i i think i think what will happen at some point is we'll have um not to give too much away, but we'll have uh, various different modes which are very heavily psychological. Yeah. Um, and the psychological games, especially with with influences and having that that whole reaction thing, is um, is is really fun. So, you know, imagine really high stakes, tense game of this. Yeah. Could be, could be pretty insane. Yeah, like real real money on the line here. You can put it in. And I mean that, I lost nothing but my pride. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And imagine if we just played for, you know, a thousand dollars. You'd feel even better and I'd feel even worse. But, but I... <laughs> 50k, yeah, that, that was the agreed amount, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Back to work it is, then. <laughs> Getting back to, um, to the, the corsets and the apes. Um, so, obviously, I mean, the, the, the apes that are there, they're the basic apes that are, that are 3D um, as our game assets, but um, we'll be developing a, a suite of different types, and you'll actually be able to go into your closet yeah. Um, and tweak the ape and, and make it, you know, the way that you want, the way that it's going to look, that it's nice to be like you. And, um, and then when you're in the game, just painting a picture of where we'll get, you'll be sitting around the table and you might have an emote or a taunt for those sorts of things that are based on, um, you know, your repertoire that you have. So you might have a, a big win and you hit your taunt button. And, um, <laughs> you, you'd be hitting that taunt right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. So if one of the guys wants uh, 
like a whole bunch of apes coming down from the trees and doing like a gritty dance behind you uh, from like the NFL and stuff. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll be building that out. I'm um, glad that isn't in the game yet. <laughs> What's that? I'm glad that isn't in the game yet. <laughs> no, it's not, not, not just yet. It'll take a while. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like having the ability to have that. The just something that's different from somebody else, and like a, yes. a certain item. It, yeah, just it does. It means there's, there's that personalization that means you can stand out from somebody else, or it like just fits with your personality. Hawaiian shirt, yeah. not me, but I'd probably be more like <laughs> I don't know, tuxedo or something. Tuxedo day. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And uh, no, it will be a lot of fun. And I think um, when it, when it all comes together and we have those animations and um, and people will be able to get out of their race the way that they want to, it'll be it'll be really really a rich experience. And beyond that, one thing that we we're looking at threading in um, is it'll read your wallet that you have connected. And let's say if you if you happen to have a really big bag or something, uh, let's say you know access your skill as an example, um, you have a big bag of access skill. It'll automatically give you permission to access those those specific uh, acting or skill um, in game related assets. Right. So, um, you don't have to have a certain amount, but um, you know, as an example, most people that have you know, a regular small bag of um, sort of one of those, you know, one example, uh, you would get you know the hat and the sunglasses um, and a cigar and possibly a shirt. Yeah. So um, it'll, it'll kind of be able to identify with what your, you know, what your crew is, what, what your, uh, what your team is, what you usually support. Because um, you know, I just want to make everyone aware we're not in competition with anyone. We, we want to support everyone because this this industry is um, it's growing. We all need to support each other. Um, yeah. And we all need to work together in some capacity. And um, there's great opportunities for everyone. So great opportunities. Yeah. With, um, Sorry. Great opportunities. I think you know, with with every other game, you're not going to see. I mean, you do see it in the in the computer world, like Mario and Sonic coming together. So one thing from one game coming into the other, but they tend to be limited. You know, Nintendo to Nintendo, but with the NFT space, you know, they can be acquired, and you see partnerships. And it's nice seeing like certain partnerships where you're seeing, you know. I've got in my DeFi pet there's there's pets that I've got there that are going to be integrated and usable in Faraland and it'll be really nice yeah I don't think I think working collaboratively seeing some of these projects coming together to share those NFTs it gives it more utility and I think we are going to see that in the future that all those NFTs that you're acquiring now are still going to have continued use in 10 years time on a different game potentially 100% and that's what it comes down to is um you know, the, the, the way to mass adoption is to provide utility and, and, and layer utility. And, um, you know, it's going to be a, a bit of a staged uh, process for all of the successful projects. There will be many, many peaks and troughs in different ways. But um, ultimately, I mean, if you can if you can provide a lot of opportunity for another community or another community's holders, um, for them to integrate with your platform or service or whatever it might be, um, then it's a win-win because they're getting exposure and utility on your project with your project and you get, you know, potentially additional holders um, or they might just spread word of mouth that it's a fantastic project. So, I mean, this is, this is marketing um, and this is the way that you win hearts and minds is that you, you know, <laughs> essentially you play the philosophical uh, and psychological game of being, um, you know, open to the public in every way shape and form that is that is good and good things happen because yeah. that's how the, the good word spreads yeah for sure
Brilliant. Well, I think we've been a really good show, and obviously we're going to see more from from Buzz and later because we've we've obviously made some strategic partnerships in, in the backgrounds, and I'll be looking excited to see what what comes out in the future. You know, we've got beta, and then I've heard for plans from the you know the future. I'm really excited to see what comes from the team. But thank you for joining us today. Thanks for, for sharing and being open about the project. Yeah, no, it's been heaps of fun. I really enjoyed it actually. Uh, happy to come back anytime and, and talk about stuff. Yeah, I think I think we can talk about crypto for, for days if we if we really yeah, wanted yeah, to. Or we can just chat crypto. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, great stream. Thanks very much for having me. Pleasure. All right, well, check that out, guys. You can buy the coin Buzz. It's currently on the market, available now. So you just go to uh, Bitcoin. I'll put a link to it down in the description below if you want to already invest in it. Um, we are in Alpha Bull. You can play this already. I'll put a link to that as well down in the description. Apart from that, that is all for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like on the video. Hit subscribe if you can keep up to date with future content. That's all from me. See you guys soon.